Patriots, we stand here today because others stood victorious when the times called for them to take a stand. Just that the time beckons us right now to take a stand. With love for our country, with respect for our countrymen, and with honor to our proud tradition. All with American history on our side. We have to come together and ask the president and his colleagues this question. If we were unwilling to accept tyranny, unwilling to overlook wickedness from the Third Reich, unwilling to be hypocritical with civil rights in the 20th century, and unwilling to compromise freedom with communism, what makes you think that we will merely accept the tyrannical mandates coming out of Washington today? What makes you think we're going to accept the tyrannical mandates coming out of Washington today complete with economic wickedness that is hell-bent on destroying dreams with job-killing legislation and promoting socialistic endeavors and trying to call it social equality? today, fellow patriots, we will not accept that. President Lyndon Johnson's Great Society has not been a great positive change here in America. Yeah. Welfare does not lead to accumulating wealth. Jobs do. Yeah. We gather together as children born from impossible paths to fight the possibility of a better American journey. We voice our concerns as a community of believers that reject what is popular to do what is right, and we reject what some call impossible because we know that in America, anything for the ultimate good by way of a loving God is truly indeed possible. That's right. We live as witnesses of perpetual constitutional victory where a descendant of slaves such as me can stand here and tell you that we must know our facts as fellow Americans in the face of opposition, respect our ideological enemies in the midst of debate, and love our nation through the midst of internal tension more than we fear being labeled as a group of the uninformed, a movement of hatred, and believers in the impossible dream. And why is that? because we know that those three things are three lies that we refuse to allow to hold back America any longer. Amen. Many will say to you that we don't have the numbers or the willpower to change the current direction of big government despite our best efforts, regardless of what you've seen in Virginia or New Jersey or Massachusetts. <laughs> reject big government as the best solution. If we took the big government perspective in colonial America, the enormity of the British Empire, an empire that never had the sun set on it anywhere throughout the world, would have never lost to a small group of upstart patriots, much like yourselves, in the first American Revolutionary War. Reject the status quo. If we decided to follow the status quo voiced in America in the 1930s by ignoring global evil, we would have never courageously overcome the wickedness of the Third Reich that led to acts of preemptive murder in Europe, Asia, and Pearl Harbor. That's right. We reject the suggestion that we don't have what it takes. If we decided that we didn't have the numbers, the resources, or the momentum to follow our Constitution in the 1950s, we would have never overcome adversity together with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and other brave Americans in pursuing Dr. King's dream in the 1960s and beyond. And we reject the notion that America accepts a socialistic way of solving problems. If we decided to accept socialism as a common denominator for us in the world, we would have never watched President Ronald Reagan ask Mikhail Gorbachev to tear down that wall of communism and then watch it fall in Berlin years later. We are a nation that is one of a kind, not one that kindly asks to be one just like everybody else around the world. 
aspire for the European model of living, we aspire to better it. That's right. And I say this with in mind. I view the president with respect as an American. I stand with the commander-in-chief in support when others in the world look to disrespect or threaten us as Americans. But I say with conviction that I passionately disagree with the president when he and others do not get that the American people do not want a health care mandate that the constitutional spirit of America mandates against. While the president and liberals in Congress attempt to catch up with Europe in the long pursuit of big government programs and government-run health care, I say that it is beyond the time for the president and Congress to catch up to the American people and focus on solutions that will create jobs first, not more government. Hey. And for those that forget, they'll soon remember once again. All it will take is for this party to give them another splash of tea. Thank you all. Thank you.